The history of math is our intellectual foundation to understanding science. Science, beautiful, awesome, wonderful science. It's the creative foundation to our ineffable future. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Burchak, and this is my podcast, Math, Science, History. I often promote my website, mathsciencehistory.com, which I built myself. Of all the hosts that I've been with, my experience with Bluehost has been the best. What I really like about Bluehost is their customer service. It is top notch and they are always there to help me. So if you're looking to build a website or you're looking to move to a new host, I highly recommend Bluehost. You can access Bluehost through my affiliate link, which is www.bluehost.com com slash track t-r-a-c-k slash math science history all one word bluehost is fantastic and they are affordable it's only $3.95 a month if you sign up for 36 months so if you do the math it's $142 to start and for me it was the smartest business investment i've ever made on September 28, 2008, SpaceX's liquid propellant rocket Falcon 1 reached orbit for the first time. Since then, SpaceX has sent spacecraft to the International Space Station, had the first propulsive landing for an orbital rocket, were the first private company to create a reusable orbital rocket, and in 2018, SpaceX was the first private company to launch an object to orbit the sun which was the Tesla Roadster. And on September 29th, 2019, Elon Musk announced SpaceX has plans to build Starship, a reusable launch system that will be capable of carrying 100 people to interplanetary destinations. How is this possible? With the help of Pi and a nudge from Archimedes, around 250 CE, Archimedes developed his approximation of Pi. If it were not for Pi, we would not be able to design trajectories for rocket ships. We would not be able to design wheels for our cars or understand how the eye works in order to make advancements in vision or understand the structure and the function of our DNA or look at the ripples in fluid and understand how fluids flow or perfect our GPS systems. The list goes on and on. Pi helps us to understand the dimension of the circle. And that is exactly what Archimedes named his treatise in 250 BCE. In Archimedes' treatise, Dimension of a Circle, he provides three propositions. The first two propositions explained basic dimensions of a circle as it relates to the area and circumference of a triangle. It is the third proposition that opened up opportunities for mathematicians over the millennia to determine the value of pi and how many digits it has. When Archimedes was trying to estimate the value of pi, he was only able to accurately estimate pi to two digits. Pi is a wonderful, magical number. Pi is a mathematical constant that's equal to the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. In other words, it is the circumference divided by the diameter. Archimedes' estimation of pi in Proposition 3 is probably one of the best explanations of how to estimate the value of pi. What he did is he began with a lower and an upper bound of the value of pi, with the lower bound being 3 and 10 71s, and the upper bound being 3 and 1 7th. He geometrically determined that pi sits between these two numbers by bisecting the angular measure of a 30 degree angle in order to actually observe the ratios of the tangent line that lies either inside the circle or outside the circle. So in other words, what he was doing is he was looking at the perimeters of polygons, both inscribed in a circle and circumscribed outside of the circle. And he took the values of those perimeters and kept adding more and more and more triangles to these polygons to get a closer approximation of pi. 
Eventually, he managed to create a 96-sided polygon, which showed that the inscribed perimeter of a 96-sided polygon inside of a circle had a perimeter of 3.1410, and a 96-sided polygon that circumscribed the outside of the circle had a perimeter of 3.1427. This was the closest that Archimedes came to approximating pi, and it was groundbreaking. Then, 400 years later, around 150 CE, the famous astronomer Ptolemy used pi to five digits, which was 3.1416. The accuracy of pi and the number of digits slowly grew over the years. In 1593, Francois Viette estimated pi to an accuracy of nine decimal places. However, He was outdone in the same year by a Dutch mathematician by the name of Adrian van Rumen, who employed Archimedes' methods and circumscribed and inscribed a circle with a polygon that had 2 to the power of 30 sides. His calculation of pi consisted of 15 decimal places. Three years later, another Dutchman, Ludolf van Kuelen, I think I'm saying that right, also employed Archimedes' methods and used a polygon with 6 times 2 to the power of 29 sides. This provided him a value of pi to 20 decimal places. And so the value of pi grew and grew. In the late 1600s, astronomer Abraham Sharp found pi to 72 decimal digits. In 1706, John Machen found pi to 100 decimal places. And in 1717, French mathematician de Lagny determined that pi had 127 decimal places. This continued over the years until 1797, when Carl Friedrich Gauss determined pi to 205 decimal decimal places. Then, over the course of 200 years, the digits of pi grew extensively. By 1967, with the help of the computer age, the value of pi was known to a half of a million decimal places. In the early 1990s, in a tiny Manhattan apartment, two brothers, Gregory and David Chunovsky, calculated pi to two billion digits using a homemade supercomputer they had built. A few years after that, they doubled the digits of pi to 4 billion digits. With the age of computers, it became easier and easier to determine how many digits there are in the number of pi. With the help of Y-Cruncher, a program that can compute pi to trillions of digits, the current world records are 5 trillion digits by Shigeru Kondu in 2010, 12.1 trillion digits by Shigeru Kondu in 2013, 13.3 trillion digits by Sandon Van Ness in 2014, 22.4 trillion digits by Peter Trueweb in 2016, and 31.4 trillion digits by Emma Haruka Iwao in January 2019. Girl power. Yeah! Fun and games aside, do we really need 31.4 trillion digits of pi? Even today, NASA uses only 15 digits of pi for their calculations in space travel. On September 28, 2019, Elon Musk gave an optimistic speech. Standing in front of his 50-meter-tall prototype, the newly assembled starship reflected the spotlights for his audience. Musk talked about making space travel as easy as air travel. Ambitious as always, he has plans for crewed space flights to Mars. Whether or not SpaceX accomplishes future travels to Mars, there is no doubt that we will accomplish interplanetary travel in the future. We have Pi on our side. We have that wonderful number that helps us to determine the trajectory of a rocket into space, around the moon, to Mars, and beyond. Currently, Voyager 1, NASA's space probe, launched in 1977, is traveling in our galaxy 13.6 billion miles away, thanks to the help of Pi. 100 years ago, scientists around the world never would have expected to accomplish the tremendous feats that we have in the last 50 years. But here we are, in an age where the stuff of our imagination is becoming tangible, where the dreams of our future are closer than they seem, and where we are fully aware that as a society, 
we can use the foundations of math and science to accomplish more than what is currently evident and tangible to us. Archimedes proved to us that as humans, we have the intellect to create a world that is forward-moving and future-seeking and capable of so much more. Over 2,000 years ago, with the seed of curiosity, the digits of pi grew. Today, its digits are unimaginable. This is hope in its greatest numerical form. This is hope that in our current age, with the seeds that have been planted, our tree of knowledge will only grow and take us to great heights and unimaginable destinations. I'm Gabrielle Burchak. This podcast has been brought to you by Caffeine. Delicious, wonderful, nectar of the gods caffeine. Coffee, tea, coffee candy, you name it. I love it. Thank you for listening to Math Science History. If you like what you are listening to, please remember to subscribe and leave a review. I would really appreciate that. If you are interested in reading more about the history of math and science, please come visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. And while you are there, if you like what you're listening to, please feel free to click on that coffee button and buy me a cup of coffee. Until next week, carpe diem!